Good evening, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. I welcome us all to today's reflection, third day of our Pentecost novena. First, I wish to appreciate all of you who have been participating in this novena and at the same time encourage us not to give up as we pray that God will look mercifully upon the petitions we brought before his throne of mercy through the intercession of St. Jutharius and grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear people of God, experience has shown that Sometimes, the things or the people that appear so common, that we are so used to, we are so close to, that we often talk about or talk to, are the most unknown, the most unappreciated, the most abused, and the most misunderstood. If we apply this to our relationship with God, we'll agree that of the three divine persons, the most common to us is the Holy Spirit. Common, not in a belittling sense, but because we often talk about him. Masses of the Holy Spirit, voting masses of the Holy Spirit, novenas to the Holy Spirit, just as we are having now. I was moved by the Holy Spirit. The Spirit that inspired me to say this. The Spirit spoke to me. Yet, of the three divine persons, the most unknown to us remains the Holy Spirit. The most confusing to us remains the Holy Spirit. The most abused is the Holy Spirit. That is why this evening, the topic for our reflection is understanding the person of the Holy Spirit understanding the person of the Holy Spirit. Can we truly understand the person of the Holy Spirit? We, we need to seek his help by saying, Come, Holy Ghost, Creator, come from thy bright heavenly throne. Come, take pause of our souls and make them all thy own. The topic is drawn from John's account of the Gospel, chapter 16, from verse 12 to verse 13, which reads, I have much more to tell you, but now it will be too much for you to bear. When, however, the Spirit comes, who reveals the truth about God, he will lead you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own authority, but he will speak of what he hears and will tell you of things to come. I ask again, can we truly understand the Holy Spirit? The first point, the answer is no. We cannot truly understand the Holy Spirit. Why? The second point, because the Holy Spirit is God. And just as St. Augustine said, if you understand him, then he's no longer God. If you think you, you now understand your God, the God yourself, understand the way he operates, then he's no longer God. So the Holy Spirit being God, cannot fully be understood. If we cannot understand it, why are we talking about it? The knowledge, no matter how little we have of him, is very important. That is why we have to talk about it. A person, for instance, who does not know that Nigeria is a West African country, but knows that Nigeria is an African country, is better than the one who feels or thinks that Nigeria is a European country. So the fact that we might not know the Holy Spirit completely does not mean that we can afford to say anything about the Holy Spirit. 
That is why we have to talk about it. So we've said that the Holy Spirit is God. That is why as Catholics, the traditional way of beginning prayer, we say in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In Matthew's account of the Gospel, chapter 28, verse 19, Jesus said to his disciples, Go into the whole world. Make them disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. He wouldn't have asked them to baptize in the name of someone who is not God, Augustine says. So the Holy Spirit is God. He is a third person of the Blessed Trinity. The first person of the Blessed Trinity. So in the scripture, we see him acting distinctly. For instance, in John's account of the Gospel, chapter 14, verse 26, we are told that the Holy Spirit is a teacher. He teaches. What does that imply? That we must relate with him as students. No matter how good a teacher is, if the students do not pay attention in class, they won't get anything, and they might fail the exams. So we must learn to listen to the Holy Spirit, to follow him as students. I remember one of my professors then, the present Bishop of Abiyokuta Diocese, Bishop Odeto Mbo in class, once said, I am the teacher, follow me. You are asking for course outline. I am the teacher, follow me. If you follow me, you will never get lost. The Holy Spirit is the teacher. We must learn to follow him. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 13, we are told that the Holy Spirit speaks. He speaks to us. So we must be attentive to listen to him. He speaks to us in, through his church. Do we listen to him when he speaks to us in the church? Do we obey? Because sometimes the things he says to us are contrary to our biases, are contrary to our views. Do we listen to him when he speaks to us in our conscience? From the text we read, we are told that the Holy Spirit enlightens and he guides. He guides. Which means we must learn to follow him, to follow his lead. Because there's a difference when we follow his lead. In Matthew's account of the Gospel, chapter 16, when Peter followed the lead of the Holy Spirit, was he was able to confess the true identity of Jesus. But a few minutes later, when he decided to speak on his own accord, the same one who was praised initially and declared rock by Jesus was referred to as Satan that needed to get behind Jesus. That is what happens when we fail to follow the lead of the Holy Spirit. When we follow him, that is when the Spirit enhances the human nature. We now do and say things that ordinarily we wouldn't have been able to do or to say. Do we follow the lead of the Holy Spirit? Is he the one guiding us? Oftentimes when we fail to follow the lead of the Holy Spirit, it's not because we are not sure of him leading us aright. It is because we are scared of how tough that road might be. We are scared of how long that path might be. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we must say to the Holy Spirit in our actions and in our words, O oh, guide our minds with thy blessed light, with love our hearts in flame, 
And with thy strength, which never decays, confirm our mortal frame. That is the person of the Holy Spirit. He's not a force. He's not a force. And there are different names, so many names used or predicated of the Holy Spirit. I just want to talk about one today. And that is love. The Holy Spirit is love. It's the product of love between the Father and the Son. And that is why he has a relationship of love with us. That explains why he's our comforter, he's a consoler, our intercessor. We, in turn, must have a relationship of love with him. But we cannot have a relationship of love with the Holy Spirit when we have a relationship of enmity, of hatred with our brothers and sisters. As we love the Holy Spirit, we must love our brothers and sisters. My dear friends, as we know also, that there are so many symbols used for the Holy Spirit. And I would like to mention one, and that is the symbol of fire. I think in my own opinion, this is a symbol that is, is responsible for the many abuses he suffers. Because we move, we move from the things that are primarily, that are more proper to fire, to the things that are secondary. It would be funny if you ask someone, for instance, what do you do with fire? And the person starts telling you that fire burns somebody or fire burns a building. Because those things are secondary. Those things are not proper to the nature of fire. Although fire has the ability to do that. The things that are more proper, things like we use it for, for cooking food, for instance, it brightens our path. That is the challenge we have with this symbol when speaking of the Holy Spirit. We see him more from the point of view of destroying like an instrument, a force, a weapon for destroying our enemies. I saw my grandmother in the dream, Holy Ghost, fire. We, but we say it in our creed that he is the Lord, the giver of life. So why how do we expect the giver of life to become the destroyer of life? How often do we, say, do we see people who have built a house and for no reason don't decide to destroy? It really happens. Even when the house is taken down, it is for the most part with the intention of putting a more befitting edifice. So why do we want that of the Holy Spirit? The one who has given life to destroy life. This does not mean that the Holy Spirit does not have the ability to do that. But that is not proper to him. That is secondary. Only when the need for that arises. In order to purify. In order to sanctify. In order to remodel. To reshape. This is the Holy Spirit. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ. And so I invite us this evening to say this prayer after me. Holy Ghost fire, purify me. Holy Ghost fire, sanctify my enemies. Holy Ghost fire, take away the spirit of hatred and jealousy in me. Holy Ghost fire, Guide and direct the steps of our leaders. May Almighty God hear and answer our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. We will now take the novena prayer to the Holy Spirit. O Holy Spirit, Divine Consoler, I adore you as my true God. 
I bless you by uniting myself to the praises you receive from the angels and the saints. I offer you my whole heart, and I render you heartfelt thanks for all the benefits that you have bestowed and do unceasingly bestow upon the world. You who are the author of all supernatural gifts and who did enrich with immense favors the soul of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, I beseech you to visit me by your grace and your love and grant me the favor I so earnestly seek in this novena. O Holy Spirit, Spirit of Truth, come into our heart, shed the brightness of your light on all nations, that they may be one in faith and pleasing to you. Amen. Come, O Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and kindle in them the fire of thy love. 